But we must realize that this is not an adequate sort of measure as soon as we have a basic income and not a means-tested targeted system. Why? Because a basic income serves also the purpose because it's given to the, the rich and the poor, the people with earnings and not. Uh, it also serves the purpose of a subsidy to low paid workers. And if you have that system that is restricted to people who have been there for five years and the others don't get it, you get a massive and unsustainable uh, distortion at the bottom of the labor market. More needs to be said in order to strengthen the possibility at the national level, but of course the, que the question that comes out of all this is whether at the global, regional or national level can we nevertheless go further in the direction of a basic income? And the answer is, of course, yes, we can. Uh, and uh, we can, um, partly, Ruben Lovrolo earlier today when he was listening to Fabio said, yeah, Fabio is more optimistic than me, but that's because he's young. And uh, now we need, of course, these young people sitting in the room to, to take over and to come with new enthusiasm uh, every time the old uh, start becoming skeptical. But we need also, and I finish just with that, the persistence of the people who are committed to an ID, who then first, that's the first time I met Eduardo, signed the distributing leaflets in July 94 in the streets of Sao Paulo. I, when he was talking then to me about uh, the idea of uh, one day having a basic income uh, introduced in Brazil, having a basic income network meeting in uh, Sao Paulo, I thought this man is crazy. But, uh, Nevertheless, he kept uh, distributing his things. Uh, sure enough, the 8th of January 2004, Lula signed the law that says there will be one day a basic income in Brazil. And just uh, three days ago, the uh, executive committee of Bien was received by Lula. Basic income is still not there. There is still a lot to do. And we can do it. We can do it thanks to all the energy of people like you in the room and many people around the world. Thank you. Obrigada, professor Philippe Van Pares, pelo seu entusiasmo, pelas suas propostas instigantes e por esse passo à frente na perspectiva da gente ter um, um basic income realmente global. Eu queria passar a palavra agora para o professor Guy Stanzi. 20 minutos, por favor. Eu. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's always strange to be sandwiched between old friends, Philippe and Eduardo. The first photo that uh, Philippe showed. I was the very young boy with very long hair <laughs> in the middle of the picture. And uh, I would like to begin today with honoring a couple of people, because we always do so at our congresses. But first, I would like to congratulate the organizers for putting on one of the best Bian congresses of all, and they deserve our thanks for doing so. The first person I'd like to honor is Patras Anais, the Minister of Social Protection until recently, who has done so much in this country to build up the Bolsa Familia and the ethos around it. And he deserves congratulations for that too. Stand up, please. A few people, pocas pessoas ouviram Patras, por favor. <laughs> I must not hit this because something happens <laughs> to the system. That's not me, but it will have to know. The third person I would like to honor is very different. And I do it with emotion, and I hope I can do it without breaking down. I first came to Brazil in 1992 to promote discourse on a basic income, and I've been here probably 12, 13, 14 times since 
always talking about basic income. And in 1998, we organized, Eduardo organized, a conference in the Congress in which there was a woman who after we had spoken, she was disabled and she came up to the rostrum with her crutches and she stood there and she said, I am the first woman to be elected a mayor of a Brazilian city. I am the first representative of landless workers to be elected a mayor. I am the first disabled person to be elected a mayor. And when I was elected, we introduced in my city, Mundo Nuovo, something like what you are advocating. Now, they said we couldn't do it. We did it. But tell you what, once we have done it, they will not take it away. Because the women of Mondo Nuovo will not allow it. A year later, I came back and I was having lunch with Eduardo and I said, what happened to Dorsalina Folador, the mayor? And he said, oh dear. Two weeks ago, someone came up on her veranda and shot her dead. I think she was a martyr for basic income. And I know she would want us to remember her today. <laughs> to change the tone, for 30 years I've been working for basic income, like Philippe, and like many others in this room. And I've tried to bring my thoughts together in a new book which has just been published, which I want to talk about briefly in the next few minutes. It's a long book, but it brings out all the thoughts I've had on basic income and the reasons why we should argue for it. And it started with the realization that the great transformation that Karl Polanyi had analyzed so perceptively had broken down in the 1970s. And in the work that I've been doing, I've been blessed with the friendship of Carrie Polanyi, the daughter of Karl Polanyi. And I'm particularly pleased that she is with us here today. Thank you for being here, Kerry. Today we are in the midst of the global transformation. It's been a period of globalization, a disembedded phase of a new transformation in which there has been systematic re-regulation of the world economy in favor of building global markets. The book looks at how that has been done and I want to bring out just one particular theme that I think is central to our debate going forward. 2008 marked the end of globalization. 